Welcome to the AMA. We have our uh, investor of our B round and board member, Vili Ilchev, with us. Um, he's, uh, he's a strategist. He, did, uh, he saw a lot of companies. He saw a lot of different trajectories. He saw a lot of things that are wrong at companies and what makes them successful. And I, uh, I hope you all pepper him with, uh, with questions. Vili, I saw you join. Is uh, your setup working? Uh, I did. Do you hear me okay? Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I'm excited. Thanks for coming on. Feel free to ask questions in the chat or even better, push, push, your, push the button and speak up. Does that mean I can ask you questions now too? Anything I want to ask in front of everybody? No, it's, it's, it's ask me anything and it's your name is on it, but uh, uh, Paul will make sure uh, you get invited to our AMA where you can answer me any questions, but uh, okay. you, you, haven't, you haven't been too shy about that so far. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, a, the questions are going to come via messaging. Is that, I see, I see them starting to come. Okay. Um, uh, what makes GitLab different than any, than other companies that you worked with in the past? Um, boy, just about everything. Um, I think, I think GitLab was definitely uh, stretching uh, the limits of what I thought was possible and breaking my uh, biases in, in so many different ways. Uh, certainly starting with the remote uh, workforce. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't know what's possible. Uh, and and I, think, I still think we don't know what is possible and what the limitations are. But, you know, certainly um, allowing myself to be open-minded and explore what a, an organization can look like that is not bound by proximity, um, but rather by vision and values, uh, I thought was uh, uh, an experiment worth making, but certainly not fitting with uh, the way any other company I've seen being built uh, in the past. Um, I think I've seen companies talk about uh, shipping and about output uh, and about differentiating on, based on innovation, but I've honestly never seen anything like this. I think what you guys as a company and gals as a company have accomplished and done uh, and, and the output and velocity with which you uh, ship software is just uh, remarkable. Um, I think the big difference here than most other companies I look at is also the opportunity um, for this company uh, is just huge. It, it, it really is um, remarkable to me that the, the, for the most part, the, the only risk in front of GitLab um, is execution risk. I don't worry about the size of the opportunity. I don't worry about the competitors, given what we discussed about output and, and, and just the velocity with which you ship. The only thing I worry about is um, continue to scale the company, build systems and processes that uh, are stable and, and, um, and, and just execute. Uh, if you guys can continue to execute the way you have, um, I don't think there's anything that can stop the company. And that's very different than anything I look at on a daily basis. So uh, I'm sure a lot of other things are going to come to mind that are very different, but um, I'll, I'll leave it at those three. And, and that's smart because there's 17 more questions in the doc already. I'll read the first one so you have time to open the doc at your, at your leisure. Uh, that's from Victor, who's not in the meeting. Do you have any examples of companies that have successfully transitioned from self-hosted offering to self-hosted offering plus SaaS offering? What lessons are can we learn from that and apply to GitLab, both technical, operational, cultural, and organizational? Uh, very few have made the transition. The one that comes to mind 
uh, that has done it spectacular, well, two come to mind that have done it spectacularly well. One is Adobe and the other one is Ultimate Software. Adobe obviously with their uh, Creative Suite and Ultimate, which is uh, an HR um, uh, software company selling basically all the back office HR systems to, to companies. Um, I think both of those companies uh, did that transition as a public company. And when you do that, you go through a really painful period where your revenue basically disappears and it gets built over again. Uh, and that's very tough to do. So my kids are saying bye, so I'm gonna tell them bye. So uh, I think you, you guys have the luxury of not having to worry about that. Obviously we all care about, uh, um, care about revenue, but not in, in the same way that, not under the microscope of a, of a public investor. Um, I, to me, um, and this is a conversation Sid and I have had for, for since I've joined, uh, to me, um, the way to make the, the, the way to make the transition is to make it cultural, which is um, how do you define the company? Uh, is it a, you know, single tenant, um, you know, on-premise software company, or is it a cloud company first that also distributes a, sing a single tenant application? And if you define the company as a cloud company first, um, and uh, then I think, um, Victor, uh, your mic is open. That will align the whole company around uh, building and scaling um, a, a first class citizen um, cloud service. I think that is that that's uh, how I think about it. It has to be um, how you guys think and define the product and the company. Uh, cloud company first um, that also allows customers to run the application in their own environment. Um, I, I don't have anything more substantive than that. It's cultural. Cool. Uh, question from Mike. Uh, Mike, are you on the call? Yes. You want to? You want to? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, let's ask your question verbally. Yeah, sure. So, um, what do you think are the biggest challenges or threats for GitLab to achieve our revenue projections for the next few years? The, the challenges are, I'm on the call, sweetie. Okay, sorry. Um, the challenges uh, in my mind are um, purely execution. Um, I mean, certainly there's nothing that worries me around product. Uh, certainly, there's nothing that worries me around um, the market opportunity of the competitors. I think the, the challenges I see are building um, uh, the brand, uh, building a way to consistently uh, communicate with the developer community and with enterprise companies, articulating the value pop, of using GitLab, uh, you know, you know, uh, getting momentum around the concept of concurrent DevOps and and, and the benefits of, um, you know, standardizing on, on on one platform for all of your developer policies and tools. Um, I think it's and, and just executing on this on the sales side. I think there's no magic. There's nothing that um, stands in the way between you guys are going to be a good company uh, no matter what. You already are a good company no matter what. The question only is, can you become a great company? And that's largely in your hands. I think it, it's purely execution, uh, uh, reaching, communicating with customers, articulating the value prop, uh, doing that at scale, uh, and, and, and making customers successful. And, and that's, it's as simple as that. Clement, you wanna talk, yeah. ask it? Yeah, I can read my next question. Uh, so my question is, 
what would you identify as the strengths and weaknesses of our current executive leadership team? Uh, you talked about how execution is important. So I think this ties in really well. And then also, what is our board doing to help improve the leadership team and these weaknesses? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, the um, we have spent the last, uh, and, and by we, I mean Sid, uh, I mean, the board, I mean, everybody on the management team has spent the last two years, certainly since I've been involved, um, to continue to surround uh, Sid with uh, great executives. Um, and I think we've made a ton of progress. Um, you know, we have an amazing leader now in Barbie. Uh, we have a great engineering lead in Eric. Um, uh, who else have we hired just in the past? You know, I, I'm, I'm really um, uh, sad and disappointed that um, uh, Joe uh, didn't um, quite um, uh, scale to, 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 to the needs of the company. Uh, but I think we've made a, a ton of progress. We, we have been hiring a chief revenue officer. Um, uh, Hopefully, uh, we're going to have something to announce to the company very soon uh, in the next few days. Um, and, and, and so we continue to add. I think what we need to uh, bring into the company is uh, more people that uh, have done it before, have seen this uh, hyperscale growth uh, play out, and can bring a level of execution excellence and maturity uh, to help us scale. But, um, you know, I, I, I've been uh, very active. I've been helping Sid with interviews and Sid has been focused on recruiting, you know, for the last year. We, we are constantly looking for, uh, you know, great talent. We've done amazing things uh, uh, with the marketing organization, uh, you know, even just below Joe. And we just need to continue to, to do the same thing for all functions. Thanks. Uh, I got the next two questions too. So uh, my next question was about uh, IPOing in 2020. So there's been recent talks in the company about how we're on track for that. And Sid mentioned that we're starting to get to a place where we'll have to decide whether that's something we still want to do in 2020. So I was trying to, Wanted to see what your opinion is on that and like how you perceive the market, whether it's favorable and all that. Uh, I, uh, I, I mean, the market is amazing right now uh, and we don't know what it's gonna look like in 2020. Um, but uh, the company is absolutely on track. I think if we continue to execute, we absolutely could go public in 2020. Um, the question is, do you want to do it in 2020 or do you want to do it in 2021? Uh, and what are the pluses and minuses in the environment of that happening? Um, but you absolutely, uh, you absolutely could uh, achieve that. Um, I think the next, you know, 12 months are going to define the trajectory of one thing that we have in our business. Um, that is spectacular, that, that is just amazing, is the leverage we get from the uh, bottom-up adoption of our uh, community edition product and just the organic and natural um, viral almost growth of, 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 of the product within organizations. Uh, what that allows us to do is have great visibility. Unless something changes in how that natural organic adoption occurs, um, that allows us to have great visibility into the future. And so if we can augment that organic bottom-up adoption with great inorganic execution on the sales and marketing side, um, you know, we're off to the races. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that's the plan. Um, I'm certainly 
extremely hopeful and optimistic that you can achieve. I think this is a special company and we have a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, you know, I'll be lucky, uh, honestly, in my career as an investor, if I um, associate myself with another company that looks like this. So it's, I, I think, and that's true probably for every person that is working at GitLab today, um, you know, most of us are um, lucky to be part of this once. Some people may be extremely lucky to be able to participate in two similar experiences, but um, it's a great opportunity and we just need to take advantage of it. I think it's definitely possible. This, yeah, your mic is open. Oh, sorry. No problem. Philly? Yeah, that, that's it. I, I, I think that's all I have to say about the IPO. Oh, but one other thing I'll say about the IPO. Um, the IPO is not a goal. Uh, that's, not, that's not the point. Um, we're not building this company with the goal of achieving an IPO and then everybody goes home and celebrates and we're done. Um, IPO is a milestone. Um, not any different than most other milestones. I think an IPO is only significant in that um, it creates uh, um, a, a more um, uh, liquid monetary value for, for everybody's uh, options and shares and ownership in the company. Um, but I don't think um, Sid is building this company uh, with the goal of just an IPO and then he goes to the beach and all of us uh, do the same. I think this can be um, a great company um, and, 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 you know, an IPO is just the beginning. I don't like sand in my shoes. Um, and uh, about that CRO, so that was in reference to not building the company to be on a beach. Um, about the CRO he just signed, so we can expect him uh, from next week. So that's amazing news. I just wanted to share with everyone. Yay. Great. I'm excited. That's Me news. Too. I'm happy. Who had the next question? I think Brandon. I think so. Uh, and I think you already answered some of this, Philly. Um, so thanks for that. But uh, my question was about balancing, uh, you know, looking at what our competition is doing, which is obviously something we do and, and something customers talk to us about uh, with, with our own vision and, and our own, you know, unique view of the world. Um, I think you've answered some of that, but I'd be interested in whatever other take you may have. You know, my view is look at the competition in the context of are there gaps in our product uh, that are preventing us from winning deals? And that's the only time I would pay attention to the competition. Um, to the extent the customer says we went with Bitbucket or you know, GitHub because you guys lack something, pay attention to that. Otherwise, where you are going, forget them. Like, who cares where they're going? They can't keep up with you. So let them, you know, play catch, catch up with, with GitLab, not the other way around. We don't need to worry about what they're doing. You know, we have an extraordinary product team. We have a great leader and said, um, you know, define the future and, and let others uh, copy you. Uh, we don't need to worry about GitHub or any of those companies. Taylor? Yeah, you kind of already answered this, but uh, what convinced you to invest in GitLab and, and become a board member? Um, I mean, I, I think I, I, I said a lot. I mean, um, big market, huge market. Um, no real dominant player. Git is still... I don't know, early stages of adoption. Um, uh, great neighborhood. You look at the competitors in the space, you have a great company in Atlassian. 
um, doing very well, they will continue to do well. But for any customer that cares about product, um, you know, we're going to win. You're never going to hear a customer that says, oh, I love the Atlassian suite. Uh, that's not to say they're not going to continue to be very successful. That's simply saying that there's plenty of opportunity for somebody with a better product and a better vision to build a big company. And I would say um, uh, the other large competitor in GitHub, um, very challenged, not executing very well in, in many ways, uh, creating a lot of opportunity for GitLab to, um, you know, come from underneath them and disrupt them in, in a major way. So, you know, I saw the execution of the company to date, the efficiency with which uh, they have um, uh, marched and, and achieved uh, so much in such little time, the velocity with which you ship, um, and you put it all together, um, and you say, man, um, there's a lot to like here. There's a lot of uh, magic here that um, I think it's a, it's a bet worth making. So uh, that's, that's how I thought about it um, at the time. Thanks for that, Vili. Um, I'm speeding up because we got lots of questions left. Joe, do you want to talk to your question? Sure, sure. So uh, you mentioned this briefly at the very beginning. What were your initial concerns about investing in a remote-only company? Do you still have those concerns? Have you found any new ones? And then um, what are you reading right now? What book are you reading? No, good question. So um, the concerns, or, I definitely had a concern. You know, I used to run corporate development at different enterprise software companies. And um, I can tell you uh, acquirers of companies uh, ascribe a lot of value to um, having people or everybody at the same place. Uh, and definitely a lot of worry and hesitation around um, a distributed workforce. Um, so one of my worries is, uh, for the most part, this is an exaggeration, but for the most part, uh, the only way out is an IPO. Now, I don't really believe that. I think there are plenty of companies that would love to own GitLab. Um, but for the most part, I, I still believe that uh, the, if you wait and count for that, you, you may be disappointed. And what that means is, uh, Sid and everybody around here has to be very clear that uh, the way to uh, build this company, the way to think about uh, liquidity one day is to build a public company. Uh, the luxury of that, or the, the, the clarity that reality provides, I think is quite refreshing, refreshing, which is nobody at GitLab should hope that tomorrow somebody gets excited about GitLab and buys you. That's not what we're doing here. We're building a great company. We're going to take this company public one day. And, uh, and, and, and if, if you're not willing to, this is not, this is not something that uh, is going to be built to be flipped and acquired next year and sold. Um, and that's quite refreshing because you know you're playing the long game and, and you're investing uh, uh, to win in the long, in the long term. So that, that's how I thought. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that there's no religion around remote. The reality is we still don't know the limitations of remote. We're going to figure it out as we scale. Uh, we may need to make some adjustments. I don't know what they are. I don't want to presume what they are. Uh, but we always need to keep an open mind that we can do things better. Uh, and if we end up hitting some limitations, we'll adjust. We'll see what we need to do, but keep an open mind. And then what, what are you reading right now? Oh, what am I reading right now? I have two kids and a dog. Uh, and so between trying to do email, uh, between after the kids go to bed and midnight, uh, no books at the moment. Um, no, good. Cool. Next, next question from Mark. Sure. Uh, the sales numbers have been pretty volatile, you know, with some months and maybe even quarters missing our numbers, um, but then other months blowing it out of the water. Last month was a good example. How do you think about that? And are you concerned? Um, I'm not concerned. 
uh, I think it is completely normal and natural uh, for this to be happening. Um, I think as the numbers get bigger, that should, um, you know, a big deal here and there shouldn't, um, you know, have a huge impact uh, or, or shouldn't make us miss the quarter, I should say. And I think actually Sid said that at a board meeting yesterday, his mindset is that any big deal that happens within a quarter should only be upside. We shouldn't be relying on one big deal to make the quarter. We should be relying, a big deal should like blow the quarter uh, out of the water. So uh, I think that's a, uh, you know, a management issue. I think it's a scale issue. I think we need to get better at it. Um, I'm not particularly worried about it, you know, I think other than the, the, the big, the most painful quarter we had, if memory serves me right, was um, Q1 of last year. Uh, we had a pretty disappointing big start of the year. Um, you know, this year we are doing way better than planned or, or better than planned. So I think um, when you're down, uh, don't be too down, pick yourself up, that's normal. When you have a quarter like you have, uh, we just, that we just did, uh, don't get too excited. Um, just block and tackle, just keep, keep shipping, keep executing. Um, and, and that's the best you can do. We have time for one last question. Uh, I'm putting Cortland on because he hasn't asked the question yet and it's very relevant to Vili. Cortland, can you ask the, the box question? Yeah, Vili, I was, <clears throat> Wondering what you learned about sales efficiency during your time at, at Box and uh, how you would apply those learnings to, to GitLab. Yeah, I mean, Box and Salesforce are very different. I think the, the, the one thing I've learned is um, being closer to revenue is um, a lot easier to monetize than uh, something that when, when, when you can delay a purchasing decision by one, two, five quarters, and you cannot create an urgency uh, to, to the, in the sales process, uh, it, 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 you end up in a lot of um, pain and misery. And unfortunately, that's what Box was. Box was, you know, the, a customer delaying the purchase of Box by a quarter or five had no impact on their business for the most part. Uh, in the case of Salesforce, a delay of the purchase and deployment of your CRM by a quarter or two uh, was very painful. And so when you have a direct uh, sales uh, motion, being close to revenue makes a huge difference in, in the efficiency with which you can monetize. Now, the lesson here is, is, that's one lesson, but the other one is if you cannot create a sense of urgency, then you cannot afford to be 100% direct sales uh, model. Uh, you need some bottom-up organic adoption of the product, uh, which is much closer to the Dropbox model. They still have direct sales. They do plenty of direct sales. They need to talk to enterprise customers, but they have the luxury of the bottom-up adoption, and that's much more efficient. So I think, you know, uh, I don't know to what extent we can create a sense of urgency in the minds of our customers. Um, I think that's DBD. I think the clarity with which we tell the uh, the story uh, around concurrent DevOps um, and the urgency we can create around it is going to determine the efficiency with which we can sell. But even if we can't make GitLab, we must have it tomorrow. Purchase. Uh, we need to rely on the organic kind of bottom up uh, adoption of the, the product. Um, to make us uh, an efficient and scalable company. Thanks for that, Vili. We're out of time. Thanks, everyone, so much for the questions. And uh, judging by the questions and the great answers from Vili, this was a great success. So if he's up for it, we'll yeah. probably have him back. Totally. I'm, I'm happy to do it uh, again uh, sooner if, if, there's, uh, if people want to chat about all kinds of things. Um, thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Great job, everybody.